In this video we'll be taking a suggestion from one of our viewers on our previous moon tutorial and we'll be adding a customizable glow to our moon. You can adjust stuff like how big the glow is, how bright it is and how sharp it is. We will also add the ability to color the moon and the moon glow so you can create interesting scenes. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so before we can add a glow to the moon, we have to open up our material where the moon is. So we're going to open up our content browser, go to our M Sky Sphere material, move all the way until we find our moon code. And we're going to do about the same thing we did with the moon last time, but now we're going to do it with a radial gradient exponential texture. Now what that is, is it's kind of like a blur of a circle, so it makes like a glow effect. It's completely dynamic, so we can add parameters to adjust it. So to make that, we're going to move away from the moon code into an open slot here. We're going to right click and type in sky atmos to get the sky atmosphere image so we're going to left click on that and now we're going to go left from that and right click and type in radial and we're going to find in radial gradient exponential we just want to left click to add that and now the problem is we can't actually drag the radial gradient exponential into the sky atmosphere image because uh, it is not a texture object and the sky atmosphere image specifically requires a texture object. So how do we fix that? Well, that's pretty simple. The sky atmosphere image is actually a material function. So if we click on that and double click it, this will actually open up the node for us to edit. Now we can see that the sky atmosphere image is actually its own node inside of this material function and the return value plugs into a texture samples UV. Now, if I go back to my material, yeah, if I actually just go ahead and dock this up here, if I go back to my material, you can actually see the radial gradient exponential takes in UVs. So this will be pretty easy to add. So we're going to go to our sky atmosphere image material function. We're going to select the normalize, the camera vector and the sky atmosphere image. And we're going to press control C to copy them. Then we're going to go back to our M sky sphere, sky sphere and press control V or control V to paste it. And then we're going to plug the return value into the UVs of the radial gradient exponential. Then we're going to just move that so it's easier to work with. And now we do not need the sky atmosphere image node anymore because we have our own version of it. So go ahead and delete that. Now the last time we actually put in the direction of the moon so that it knew where to map out the texture. So to do that, we're going to right click and type in light direction. Uh, wait, uh, my T button isn't working. We're going to type in light direction. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and press light dire. So here next to the normalize vector inputs, we're going to right click and type in light direction. So we're going to find this node called atmos sky atmosphere light direction. We're going to add that. We're going to set the light index to one to get the position of the moon. And we're going to plug that into the vector input. Now we also have a size variable here. This will actually determine how big the glow is. So till how far the glow stretches. So we're going to hold one on our keyboard and left click. Actually, I held two. I'm going to just hold one on my keyboard and left click. And we're going to set the default value to something like 0.15. And we're going to right click and convert this to a parameter. This is going to be called moon blur, or actually moon glow size. And we're going to go ahead and plug that into the size of here. And we're going to just go ahead and move that a bit. We're also going to go to the bottom left to the group under details and change it from none to moon so that we know it's a part of the moon. And now we can actually work on this uh, gradient. So how do we mask the gradient? Well, the thing is that the gradient is already from black to white. So it's already sort of a mask. So we don't have to add any mask code. So let's go ahead and drag off the radial gradient exponential and we're going to type in named and we're going to add named reroute and then we're going to call this moon glow mask and now we have a mask for the glow now i'm also going to go ahead and drag off the radial gradient exponential again and type in named 
and get an add named reroute declaration node. This is going to be called moon glow. And now currently both of these are the same fin, but I am planning to add more features to the moon glow later in this video. So that's why they are separate. Awesome. So let's see what happens if I compile and save. So I'm going to go to top left, click on apply, and uh, that worked totally fine. Um, so let's go ahead and actually add the mask from the glow to the moon. So we're going to go to the moon code. And here where we multiply the alpha and the mask, we're going to go ahead and after the multiply, we're going to add an add node. Then we're going to add our moon glow mask. So right click and type in moon. And we're going to use the moon glow mask reroute and plug that into the B value. And then finally, we're going to drag off the add node and add a saturate node. The reason for that is the saturate is a clamp from zero to one. And that fixes glitches where the moon becomes kind of like brighter because you're adding two uh, masks together. So that fixes that bug. We're going to drag off that and plug it into the moon mask and now we have an error and this error is really easy to solve if we go back to our glow code here you'll see that it complains we didn't plug anything into the rotation so plugging anything into a rotation is a requirement so i'm going to hold one on my keyboard and left click and then i'm going to drag the results into the rotation now we don't have to convert this to a parameter because the rotation doesn't matter if we rotate a circle it's always going to be a circle right it doesn't have any texture on it. So we're going to leave it on zero and not mess around with it anymore. Awesome. So if I go back to my moon code above here, now the problem is that we have widened the glow mask. That means now the glow can appear, but it isn't appearing yet because we need to add the glow quite literally as well. So we masked off the glow. We need to add the glow. I'm just going to go to the bottom right and save now. So how do we add the glow to the skybox? It's actually pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to select the moon brightness and the multiply and the moon node here. We're going to move this out a bit to the right and we're going to expand this common block. And now that we've done that, we can actually now add the moon glow. So after the multiply node from the result uh, of the sky atmosphere image, we're going to drag off this multiply and do an add node. Then the bottom value of the add is going to be the glow. But if I go back to where we did the slurp here, the problem is that um, if we were to just add the glow, it will render over the moon, causing the same problem we had where the stars were rendering over the moon. So we're going to have to mask off the glow where the moon is. So to do that's pretty easy. We're going to go back to our moon code and in the bottom of the add, we're going to drag off and create a lerp node. So a linear interpolate node, we're just going to click on that. And we're going to change the alpha to the mask of the moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the multiply that is between the alpha and the mask and plug that into the alpha. And the top value is going to be the glow. The reason for that is because the B value is where the moon is and where the moon is, nothing should be rendered and uh what well, where the moon is yeah nothing should be rendered and where the moon isn't the glow should render so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and type in moon glow and we're going to add the moon glow just the glow i'm going to left click that and i'm going to drag that into the a value and the b value is going to be set to zero because where the moon is nothing should render from the glow Awesome, we can just move these out a bit and now we can go ahead and plug this add into the multiply. And let's go ahead and press apply and save. Let's test this out. You can see there's already a glow. So if I open up my content browser and go to my MI Sky Sphere and I go ahead and undock this from the window and I go to my first person map, I have this moon glow size variable I can adjust. So if I go ahead and adjust this, you can see now the glow is bigger and smaller. But this isn't really a smooth glow. It's just a massive blob of a circle. So how do we fix that? Well, that's pretty simple. We're going to go to back to our M Sky Sphere material. And here where the glow code was, we're going to go to this radial gradient exponential. And the radial gradient exponential has this uh, variable called density. 
So if I hold one on my keyboard and left click, I'm also going to just uh, minimize this MI sky sphere. If I go ahead and right click this and convert this to a parameter, I can call this moon glow sharpness. So what this will do is this will be a variable of how sharp the glow is. So if I set the default value to 2.33, which is by the way, the default value here, if I plug that in, I can go ahead and press apply and save and go back to my first person map. Then I can open up my material instance once again. And now I can change the glow moon or the moon glow sharpness. And if I adjust it lower, now we have a smoother blend overall. And this is practically how harsh the glow is. So if this value was on a hundred, it would practically be a circle. If it was like one, it would have a nice uh, blur. So the magic here is is you want to change the moon glow size and the moon glow sharpness to whatever you want to. So for me, I would like the moon glow to be somewhere about, um, let's say 0 0.15, which is this awesome small glow. I'm also going to change the sharpness down a bit. So it adds this nice glow. Remember, this is whatever you want to do. I think I'm going to set the sharpness to 1.5 and I kind of like that. So it's important to note this moon glow size is kind of like setting the moon scale so if you want the glow to be just above the moon scale all you have to do is just uh, add an additional value above the moon scale so if the moon scale is 0.2 you would do this uh, 0.25 so that's how you uh, work with that i remembered i did not set the uh, group of this moon glow sharpness so let's go back to our m sky sphere material i'm going to close the mi sky sphere uh, material instance for now and I'm going to go to the bottom left of my details panel when I have the moon glow sharpness selected and I'm going to change the group from none to moon and that is awesome so we can go ahead and apply and save now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and select all of this and press C to comment it and I'm gonna call this moon glow okay and I'm just going to move the sky atmosphere image up a bit and I'm also going to move all these nodes up a bit to clean this up okay that looks perfect so what is there more to do well we have a problem if I go ahead and apply and save go back to my first person map and open up my material instance and open up the and my sky sphere and if i go ahead and undock this and go back to my first person map the problem is that um, if I were to set the moon brightness, it would actually affect the glow. Now, if that is something you want, you can do that. But for me, it uh, doesn't give me enough control. So I would rather want to fix that. So how do we fix that? That's quite easy, actually. We're going to uh, close out this uh, MI sky sphere. We're going to go to our M sky sphere and we're going to move back to our moon code. And this multiply where we set the moon brightness, this has to happen before we do any of the masking code. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left side of the moon comment. We're going to move it all the way to the left and we're going to select the moon scale rotation, all of this code here and move it to the left. And now we're going to move this multiply over here to make it a bit more cleaner. I'm going to add a reroute node here by double clicking my left button. And also I'm going to add one more here to uh, make this a bit cleaner. I'm going to drag off this one and connect this to the B value. And now we have a way more cleaner node set up. Okay, now to actually fix the uh, brightness fin, all we have to do is go to this multiply with the moon brightness here on the right side. We have to select both of them and press Control X to cut them. Then we want to connect the add to the moon so that it actually reroutes correctly. And then after the results of the sky atmosphere image, we want to control uh, V to paste it in. And we're going to plug in the results into the multiply and plug in the multiplies outputs into the next multiply. And now the moon brightness code actually happens before we do any of the glow code. So now the glow of the moon is separate from the glow of the well outside edge now the problem is that uh now we can adjust the moon glow brightness but we can't adjust the glow brightness so how would we do this well it's pretty simple i'm gonna select this multiply and moon brightness i'm gonna press ctrl c to copy them 
and I'm gonna move all the way to the moon glow parts over here. I'm gonna extend the common block and I'm gonna move the moon glow here to the right side. I'm gonna press, press uh, control V to paste this. I'm gonna connect the radial gradient exponential into the A value and plug the output of the mod supply into the moon glow. So now this has its own brightness settings, but the problem is that this is called moon brightness, so we need to rename it for the glow. So we're gonna left click on that, go to the bottom left details, and change the parameter name from moon brightness to moon glow brightness. We can press enter to save that, and we can go ahead and apply and save that. And now if we go back into our scene and open up our content browser and open up our MI Sky Sphere and undock it and go back to our first person map, now we have a moon glow brightness setting where I can adjust the brightness of the glow independent from the moon. Now I'm going to leave this at a value of 1 because I feel like it looks pretty cool and uh, the moon I'm still going to leave at a brightness of 1.5 but I think I'm going to raise the moon glow size size to 0 0.2 and I'm going to change the moon glow sharpness down a bit to make this cool um, glow effect and I think I'm going to leave it at 0 0.8. Okay so that's how I'm going to leave the glow. I want to go ahead and add one more feature. That's because the way we added the brightness slider means that we can customize this so easily code wise. So I want to add one more small feature. I'm going to add a feature where we can actually change the color of the glow. So if you have like a red moon, you can actually colorize the glow any way you want to. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to close our MI Sky Sphere. We're going to go to top left and go to our M Sky Sphere. And then here at our moon glow code, after we do the multiply, actually wait, before we do the multiply, so we're going to take our multiply and moon glow brightness and move this to the right. And we're going to drag off the radial gradient exponential and type in multiply to make a new multiply. We're going to plug the output of this multiply to this multiply. Now to multiply a color so that we can colorize this, all we have to do is hold free on our keyboard and left click. And now if we right click this and convert this to a parameter, this will now be a color parameter. And what we can do is we can call this moon glow color. So I'm just going to call it that. And one thing we have to do with it is we have to set the default value to white because if the default value is black, the glow won't actually appear. So we're going to go to bottom left under the details panel, go to the default value and just set it to white and press OK. And now we're going to plug in this top value into the B value over here. And we're also going to go back to the bottom left of the details panel and set the group from none to moon. Awesome. Now what we can do is we can actually copy this code all over again. So copy this multiply with color. So press control C and we can go to our moon. And before this multiply, we can also do the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our multiplier moon brightness and move it up a bit. Then we're going to press Control V to paste this code over here. Actually, I'm just going to move it down below because let's go ahead and move this multiply out of the way. So I'm going to move it down here below. And I'm also going to move this reroute over here for a bit more cleanliness. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and select our moon glow color and multiply and move it back up here. Now we just need to plug in the result from the sky atmosphere image into the A value and we have to plug the output of the multiply into the A value of this multiply. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and click on the moon glow color and remember we have a moon glow color already so we need to go ahead and rename this from moon glow to moon color. You do that and the details panel and once we have that, now we can adjust the color of the moon and we can also adjust the color of the moon glow. So let's go test that. We're going to go to top left and click apply and click save. We're going to go back to our first person map, open up our content browser and open up our material instance. We're going to go ahead and undock that. We're going to go back to our first person map and now if I tick on show the moon color, if I tick on the moon color and the moon glow color, I can click on the moon glow color and change the color of the glow. Now it might be a bit harder to see so I'm going to set the glow to red and I'm going to set the moon glow size bigger and now you can see we 
have a custom glow for the moon. Now, the thing is, is that the glow is red, but the moon is still white. It looks kind of weird. So we can also go to the moon color and set that to red. You can also lower the shade of red so you get a better effect color wise. So this is the saturation value. If you do that, you can make a reddish moon that doesn't look too weird. And now you can just go ahead and play around with the sharpness value and all that to make a custom colored moon. I'm not going to mess around too much with that. I'm pretty happy with the end result here, but you can play around and do whatever you want to. So yeah, I think that's it for the tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video, hit dislike if you didn't, and see you guys in the next one. Good night, everybody.